So that's Emily and David Faulkner. Welcome, Emily, David. I'll get you to present this report, Council. Yeah. Thank you very much. So yeah, this is a report on um, a couple of private plan changes that the um, that have been made um, by landowners to the Selwyn District Council. So it's not something that Selwyn District Council is proposing per se. It's something that landowners in QE and Leaston are proposing. Uh, we were first um, notified about this um, when when it hit the, the public. Um, uh, well, the public notice ended up in the paper about uh, two and a half weeks ago, uh, and we've been in discussions with uh, our colleagues at Selwyn District Council about this since then. Um, so they, they have been informed about the, the fact that we are um, put, presenting this report to uh, the committee today. Uh, we, um, the, the, the issue with, this, uh, with these plan changes is that they are outside the Greater Christchurch uh, Urban Development Strategy boundary. So they're, they're, they're not something that um, is captured by the Greater Christchurch Partnership per se. So if they were within the Greater Christchurch Partnership uh, boundary, there would be a process to follow to notify all the, uh, all, all the partnership um, councils about how this would, um, would progress. But because this is outside the partnership boundary, uh, it, it, it doesn't follow that process. And these are probably the largest uh, plan changes outside of that boundary that we have seen for some time. So the partnership haven't really had to grapple with this issue about what happens outside of its own boundaries. So that's why uh, this hasn't really come up recently. And um, the partnership, as far as I'm aware, does not have a position on what happens outside of the partnership. So uh, this, 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 these are quite unique circumstances that we are in. Um, but uh, despite that, yes, we have, uh, on a no surprises policy, continued to discuss this with the, uh, the, um, the relevant officers at Selwyn District Council, and they are um, aware of, of what we're doing today. Um, so, just just uh, just briefly, yeah, there's two two private plan changes. They're both for residential development. Uh, some are within the area that has been identified for growth within those townships. Um, some, in the case of Leeston, is beyond the area and going into rural land. So, um, we've uh, drafted a submission to, to raise that attention, to, to um, alert you of this and to, to um, uh, raise uh, potential issues that, that, that we think need to be discussed at the uh, partnership level uh, and, and through the process of the plan changes. Thank you. Any questions? Rani? Just... I'm just trying to understand, like, because Selwyn District Plan is going to go through like a plan change process, and 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 like my understanding is, if it's against sound resource management practices, they can actually decline the private plan change. Yes. So, so I can't quite understand why they wouldn't be doing that and then doing this as part of their district plan change review. It would be a much more efficient use of resource, and would seem to be a much more sound process for looking at you know, the kind of big picture of all those issues collectively across the district, which they're just about to do. Yeah, so yeah, as, as I said, this is not proposed by Selwyn District. This is uh, a private landowners are proposing this. They have a, um, a, a right, as, as any private landowner does, to propose a private plan change. Um, and they normally, or well, in the RMA, there is a moratorium post a district plan review that there can't be a private plan change within two years of a district plan review, but there is no such moratorium before a district plan review. So, yeah, these landowners are entitled to put in an application uh, for a private plan change. Um, generally, the costs all sit with, with them for the processing of this private plan change, um, so that's what they've chosen to do. So, um, yeah, it's, it's completely within their rights, and, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's not Selwyn. If a respective Selwyn District Council would have been running the process, they probably would have done it a different different process, but so that's not... Do we, do we know if Selwyn Council... Um, what their decision, I mean, do we know if they had much consideration of actually accepting this as a plan change for themselves rather than the private plan change and then being able to put it in the district plan process? Yeah, so they, they do have a, um, there is an option under the Resource Management Act that they can adopt this as their own plan change. Yeah. And uh, they've decided not to do that. Um, so this is a, a purely private plan change. Uh, and um, I suppose, yeah, one of the things, if, if they adopt it as their plan change or if they, um, 
adopted it to you know, part of the Japan review, then all the costs of this plan change would fall on the, the council and, and the ratepayers uh, of Selwyn. Mm -hmm. So they, um, but this is a private plan change, so um, they have, uh, it, it, it will go through a private course. So have, have you seen the email that we've just been sent? No. No? Okay, any other questions? Well, we're not allowed to talk about it. Thank you. Just a one question. Uh, you particular uh, emphasize uh, the 4.11.1. So because the, those uh, private change uh, proposal are inconsistent with the policy, okay? Uh, 5.3.8 uh, in the uh, uh, Canterbury Region Policy Statement. But if we review the 2.4, and sorry, 2.3, the private change, a uh, uh, minor change, the sovereign district plan to remove policy related to deferred status and uh, including those ODP. The area. My question is whether you know will be make it a success or not regarding to lose the two private change in the owner. They make this the resource council application. Two point four. And the four point three eleven. No why? It's my question. Yeah. So um yeah, the, the, so the, the, there's two different documents there. So there's the Selwyn District Plan that um, has identified some areas around uh, Kiwi and Leiston as deferred for, for, for living, for, for residential. Um, so in the case of Leist, the Leiston Plan change, some of the area identified for this plant, private plan change is within that deferred area. Um, so yes, that, that, that area is consistent with... Um, where that town is proposed to grow, but there is also additional area beyond that that they're proposing into rural area, uh, um, which is not consistent with um, what is in the district plan. Um, and so that's where the regional policy statement sort of kicks in in terms of that, that guides um, urban growth as well. Um, the, also the other thing is they are, try, they are proposing to in, change the zoning of, of that area. So it was going to be a low um, almost rural residential type zoning within that deferred area. Uh, they're wanting to have it as a more urban um, type zoning. So there'll be more houses than what was um, anticipated under the Selwyn District Plan. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Right. Is there someone would like to move? Melanie, second by the Mayor. Right, any discussion? We, we do have to be really careful about how we um, work with our partners, but we've also, the, the greater issue for me is my, in my community, and, and um, Melanie's as well, you know, we've got traffic issues and it's building up with Kashmir Road, um, St. Torres Road and others. So if you look at the um, Leaston development, uh, uh, ideally, there'll be some traffic going through our, and adding to our communities already um, under pressure traffic um, issues. We, we keep being told we've only got certain budgets, we can only do certain things per year. You know, I'm having a meeting on Friday with residents on Kashmir Road who are really concerned about this. And so I can, I'm going to support council staff on this without question because we do have to look at the ongoing future pressures on our communities, on the rat running, etc. Because it's not just the main roads, it's those smaller roads as well. And every single car that comes into Christchurch from outside, we should be absolutely planning with our partners to, to try and um, reduce the effects on that because with this I worked out that there's going to be over 500 lots and if you put two cars on the road per lot that's a thousand vehicles and even if 50 of them come onto Kashmir Road or St Torres Road or those areas that are affected in my community in Melanie's community that Lincoln Road, for instance, you know, that really affects our community, so we do have to, to make a stand and make a point. So I'll be supporting this. Thank you, Tim. Right. I'll put the resolution. All those in favour? Aye. Aye. Against? 
carried. Thank you. Thank you. I'll have Jimmy close the meeting with Karaki. Okay. Thank you. Uluhia, 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 Kite Ulu, Tapului, E Te Tani, Kewatia, Kia, Mama, E Nat Ho, T, and T Nana, Kia no Rono, Wakaradia, Ake T Rona, Kia Tina, Tina, Homie, Huye, Tai Hie. Kia, Jimmy, meeting closed.